everyone, my name is Emma. Today we are going to be talking about pandemic shows, movies, and documentaries, and how they all really fit into the time that we are currently living in. When it comes to choices and decisions, the ones that we make with more intention will help us create the world that we want to live in. So we talk about here on this channel, how can we look at the world that exists all around us and bring in lessons into our lives to change our lives for the better. Human history has always been plagued by viruses and the biggest mass deaths of humans have been surrounded by various plagues whether it be the bubonic plague smallpox the spanish flu there has been epidemics pandemics all around the world and we have faced many in the past 20 years over our entire human history and especially in movies shows documentaries that really go into the details of what would happen if a virus started somewhere anywhere and the documentaries that i've watched there was one that practically predicted a step by step what would happen if a pandemic was to occur and every single one of these documentaries always said that it is coming it is on its way it is not an if but when a pandemic shows up and they were absolutely right from the origins of where a pandemic would occur to the places that would be hit the hardest the second waves the quarantine the amount of time it would take a vaccine to come out all of these were predicted pretty much accurately in this documentary called The Coming Pandemic, which is available on Amazon Prime. And it was very hard to watch because of how accurate it was. It came out in 2005 and they were right, a pandemic was on its way. And there was a few other documentary series. Netflix had come out with one on January 2020, How to Deal with a Pandemic. And it did also go through almost the same information stating where it would start, who would get hit the hardest, when that would happen, when these waves would come in, what quarantine would look like, how travel would stop all over the world, and how masks would become a part of everyday life. And again, predicted almost step by step what ended up happening, how it was dealt with, and at the heart of all of these documentaries was the very truth that there is no government that is fully prepared how to deal with this, and even if this was to arise, how would the governments listen to the scientists, the doctors, and all of them in these documentaries seemed very apprehensive and scared of what might happen because of how much mistrust has already been put into them because as they have kept saying, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, they were constantly being told no, they can't do certain research, they can't get access to stockpiling different types of resources that would be necessary. And we saw the outfall of that. We've, we ran out of masks at the start of the pandemic in America and all over the world until production kicked in and hand sanitizer was mass produced and more masks were produced and a lot of companies that created other items started producing those. And there was a, quite a few companies that create alcohol that switched creating hand sanitizer and we're able to jump into that and start providing the necessary or believed necessary items that would be needed. So I'll post a few of the documentaries right here and I'll link them down below or where you can find them because they were really interesting to see and how all of them really stated that it would come from an animal transmitted to a human. And then that is pretty much how viruses work. It is first originated in a human and then transmitted into a person. And within that first person, that virus is then mutated to a place where it can infect other humans. And that is really how pandemics start, how viruses start. And I'll link a few other documentaries that talk about that in and of itself, where they come from, why it matters, and how animal agriculture is really the place where all of the most recent ones have started. And if you think about it, H1N1, birds flu, it comes from pigs or it comes from birds. And these are the places that we interact with animals the most within animal agriculture because of the conditions that these animals are forced to live in, the tight quarters, and the relationships that they have with the people who 
work on these farms. They're forced to have direct contact and these diseases spread from one to another very quickly. And most antibiotics that are created in the U.S. end up actually going to these farm animals trying to keep it down, which in turn ends up creating superbugs. So when they do get to infecting humans, the medicine that was supposed to work on them no longer does because the virus has already been able to adapt, the bacteria has already been able to adapt. You actually can't prevent viruses, but you can prevent bacterial infections and there's antibiotics. And because we have now created superbugs, we might be seeing the end of medicine actually being able to work or the medicine technology that we know today. So I'll post another documentary that I watched about that below and it was about pandemic, being vegan, how eating animals has intersected with the death of the human population at various amounts of time. If you've heard, the Black Death was started by a rat being on board of a ship, and this is how these diseases are translated to humans through animals, and that is where they all begin. But that origin story is often not talked about, and these documentaries, depending on which one it was, talked about origin stories. So check them out. They're pretty interesting. Now, the documentaries did a fantastic job at going into the depths of what could happen, how people will react. There might be rioting. There would be people very hysteric, people who want to get the vaccine, people who don't want to get the vaccine. And it pretty much, between all these different documentaries, the full scope of what did happen within the pandemic these past few years really did come to fruition. So, that is about the documentaries, but there has been a lot of movies and shows that have come out in regards to viruses and to pandemic strains. One of the most notable is the zombie obsession that was alive the past 15 years and most notably in about five years ago and around 10 years at that time where pretty much everybody was obsessed with zombies whether it was the walking dead or world war z and i zombie is one of the shows that i watched and it pretty much talks about how it's kept secret people don't want to expose it they don't want people to know who has it and there's a lot of elements within all of these different shows about zombies or movies about zombies that brings it to the unrealistic but there is expansions of reality within them just like we've said before every show and movie is based in reality to some extent in the fantasy realm though it is fantasy and there exist creatures in there that don't exist in our world the lessons and the problems that they face are ones that are only understood in our reality because we do not have another one to pull from. So there's been movies about zombies, and then there's been movies and shows about actual contagions and pandemics, such as Contagion itself, which had a very similar origin story and a very similar kind of rise in what would happen and how there could be military trucks just pulling bodies all over the street and that we really did see those images coming across when we were looking at world news as we were learning about the pandemic, as we were going through it, and just realizing how similar so many of these scenes were to stuff that we actually faced in reality was quite crazy, in inspiring almost to see, wow, we knew about this and we didn't really prepare for it. And pretty much everyone has been talking about it for so long, but it is the scientists and the doctors who weren't listened to, which is what is happening in regards to climate change as well. Scientists are telling us what's going to happen. There's going to be abnormal weather patterns. And I know where I live, it has gone from 90 degrees to 45 degrees within the same day within honestly sometimes a few hours and that kind of drastic shift has really changed and has happened all across the planet and we are seeing the side effects and many movies that have talked about climate change and documentaries that have talked about climate change are pretty much talking about these same patterns saying there's going to be abnormal weather there's going to be sea level rise and 
any show that is about the world ending shows those different characteristics happening at that time. So it's very interesting to see how we have documentary shows, movies, all talking about what's going on, and yet we are still acting as if it's not actually happening. And we're seeing it in both entertainment and in real life already the signs of what can happen. And if we were to watch these documentaries or these shows, we know that there isn't a great ending. But yet we aren't doing anything, just like many scientists and doctors predicted that if this was to happen, there would be a lot to learn, there would be a lot of mistakes because we aren't preparing enough. And we're seeing that as well with climate change. And that is really the hardest part, that we do have some sort of prediction of what's going to happen. We're seeing stuff already happen and that it's still not taken seriously and actions to further climate change are still happening and it's really difficult to see that but I'm sure that this is also how the scientists and doctors who work on infectious diseases and who track pandemics and epidemics felt and that their worst fears did come to light when they realized what was happening around the world. So other shows include Containment, which is literally about Le Cordon Sanitaire, which is the French word for quarantine, and it's in Atlanta, Georgia, where the headquarters for the CDC are, and it just goes into what would happen in the mass chaos and how the streets would just be blocked off and people would be forced to stay in those areas. And though it was a bit more extreme, it really did play into how afraid people would be of physical contact. And the show did a very interesting job at portraying that and really showing pretty much no one interacting physically. And I think that there was a mother and a son and that either they didn't or it was very much reduced contact between them as well. And there is Travelers, which is also on Netflix. They had a few episodes where there was a pandemic and they explained how pandemics happen, what case zero means. Patient zero is what different factors go into calculating how big a virus is going to be an impact and hurt people and kill people and how that spread so they did a really interesting job there and in a lot of these movies the death rates were a lot higher the diseases were a lot more aggressive than we faced in this pandemic but that kind of progression of disease is something that has been faced in human history and whether it be the bubonic plague the black death or the smallpox spanish flu which are just a few of the unfortunately many that have happened, those were quick turnarounds and a lot of people that had signs of it did end up dying. And we do have so much information about what happened during those times. And unfortunately, even though we should have learned, there's definitely some gaps in what happened. So I'll post all of the different documentaries, shows, movies that I watched, and they were all very interesting. A lot of people were watching them over the pandemic, just trying to be one of the ways they coped with what was going on. But it is always fascinating to see how much humans have developed and how much we haven't and how much it is possible to predict human behavior. So perspectives are important and the choices we make that go along with those perspectives are equally as important and the choices we make day to day end up creating the world and life that we lead. So hope you check some of those out or you got something out of today's video but either way I hope you tune in next time we're going to keep talking about what's going on in the world, the different shows, movies, books, the lessons that exist, the things that we can do and participate to create the world that we want to see. I hope to see you next time, but until then, have an amazing day.